Hello and welcome to the show. This week's Fail Race versus the community, we were running B-Class cars that were naturally aspirated. Our first race was at the Sebring Club Circuit. Somebody had some Xbox malfunction further back on the grid and their car failed to get off the line, causing a bit of chaos. We've this a couple of times now on Fox <laughs> 5. Just, yeah, a little bit of bad luck at the start line and causing... Luckily, the car was sort of halfway down towards the back of the field. If it had been on the, on the front rows, that would have been a real mess. Yeah, it's something that can happen with, uh, with online racing. So while the top cars all got away fairly safely at around the tight hairpin at the first corner. The cars further back, it was a little bit more chaotic, shall we say. At the front, it was a Ferrari Testarossa that led the way, but was coming under pressure from a Toyota Celica as they come down the, uh, the start finish right up towards turn one. The Ferrari doesn't go defensive. The Toyota uh, has enough space up the inside. It's a simple-ish, I say simple, it's a, <laughs> it looks fairly uh, undramatic outbreak and maneuver up the inside. Uh, and the Toyota has got himself into the lead. The Ferrari ended up out a little bit wide through turn one and is now under threat from a very fast Corvette. Stingray, the Corvette, out on the grass a little bit. That's a scary place to be. But uh, the Corvette remains on the inside for the next corner. The Ferrari, though, is the slightly better car through the corner. Has a little bit, has a little bit more grip uh, than the than the Stingray and manages to hold it around the outside and keep the the position up towards the next corner. The Corvette is a little bit too far back. And this track can at times be a little bit difficult to overtake uh, in places because there's only really sort of two 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 good overtaking spots uh, around around this track. The rest of it's going to be quite narrow, quite slow at times. Um, there wasn't a huge amount going on for a large portion uh, of this race. These two cars were about the most exciting for for, for most of, most of the race. Uh, the field was just spread out. Quite a few cars, I said, at the start line were a bit broken, and then everybody else just all spread out, and not an awful lot happened. Uh, yeah, the, the Ferrari versus the, the Corvette was probably the more interesting battle for, for most of this. Corvette trying to go the long... Yeah, it's, it's a tough thing to go around the outside of that corner, especially when your car isn't the one with uh, <laughs> with the grip. Again, this next corner uh, is not, not really... It, you can get overtakes done there. It's not really... Uh, the best of overtaking spots then up towards uh, this final corner again another very long corner that uh, that is quite hard to overtake on but then we have a very long straight and we saw the straight line speed of this corvette it is quite ridiculously fast as we come down towards the uh, the first corner of the corvette it is long gone uh, again <laughs> at a wheel of the grass which is quite a, a risky thing to do the ferrari's on the inside having a look but uh, can't really do too much about it and then on the exit the corvette has got that acceleration down towards the uh, the next corner and is well out of range uh, of the Ferrari. At the front, it was to be the Toyota Celica that would take the victory by a fairly huge margin. You saw the second place Ferrari uh, and Corvette uh, squabbled for quite a bit of the race and yeah, the, the Toyota just drove away uh, at the front of the field uh, to take victory. The Corvette coming in second and the Ferrari would get, would get third. It was further back that uh, things would get a little bit more interesting on the final laps. As I said, not much happened for, mo <laughs> for most of this race, but as we came towards the final lap, there was an almighty battle over fourth place between my Corvette, a Datsun, and a BMW M3 up towards turn one. I was having a look at the inside. My Corvette was technically the faster car here in a straight line, but it didn't have the same acceleration as the Datsun. I also ended up over a curb and on the grass and wanted to back out of it. That curb spun out a few silly car builds in its time, so I figured it would be safer for me just to back off uh, and try again. But I was running out of overtaking places into the next corner. I was far too far back to have a look at the Datsun. The Datsun was all over the back of the BMW, trying to find a way past. And as they were battling, they brought me right back uh, into the fight up towards the next corner. I managed to get my Corvette uh, on the inside. The Datsun has to go in the long way around the outside. I think it gets a wheel caught on the dirt and gets pulled pulled sort of out wide. It's a dangerous thing that can happen uh, on Forza 5. So I get the position uh, from the Datsun. I'm trying to now see if I can get the BMW as well uh, on this final lap. But there isn't a huge amount of opportunity to do it. I outbreak myself a tiny bit into the final turn. The Datsun has a look up the inside uh, but takes a bit of a shallower line. I get a bit of drive off the corner 
and I managed to keep the uh, fifth position, but I don't have enough of a straight and enough straight line speed to catch up to the BMW. BMW gets fourth, I end up in fifth with the Datsun uh, in sixth, and then the AI of the Datsun completely forgets how to do the first corner. <laughs> but, you know, it happens. Uh, On to our second race at one of the alternate layouts of Yas Marina. I quite like this layout over the curbs. It can be quite vicious to some, <laughs> some of the cars around here. Turn 1 can also be uh, quite scary. There was uh, a little bit of bumping and bait swapping, and a couple of cars ended up pointing the wrong way. It was <laughs> in the background. Some cars are, are using plenty of the, uh, of the escape road. The Celica uh, is going around the outside of a uh, BMW. This next corner here is also very difficult in this sort of class of car. Some cars will be taking this corner flat out. Some of the cars that are more straight line speed orientated won't quite be able to, especially on the first lap when you're not quite sure what your car's going to do. If you haven't driven this track with this car with your with your car before, yeah, it's quite a quite scary a scary moment. The sleeker gets a, a nice cutback overtake on a purple BMW. Uh, in the background there is all manner of chaos going on. I got a whack from somebody uh, and ended up pointing sideways and broke a fair bit of my car. The Sleeker uh, then does a, another fairly impressive manoeuvre going around the outside of one corner uh, to get to the inside of the final one. But then there is the drag race down the start finish straight. Another pretty long straight to contend with and it's the two BMWs that have the straight line speed. The purple BMW being incredibly fast up towards the first corner. The black BMW is on the inside. The Sleeker holds it around one part and still they're going side by side through this first section. Yeah, that's not an easy place to be going side by side. So well done to both drivers for keeping it together and still the Sleeker uh, hasn't quite fended off the BMW eventually. He just gets gets the position. The black cars are having at the inside. That is not a place you want to be going too wide. Particularly, that's a scary place to uh, to try to try and overtake and maneuver. Luckily, the E30 backed out of it, and everybody got out the other side uh, relatively safely. The Celica then does a, a carbon copy of the earlier overtake and finds himself back up into second as the E30 gets a big, big slide. That's the dangers of, <laughs> of this track. Very easy to uh, to have little mistakes like at, uh, at this particular track. I saw quite a few cars uh, spinning out in various places. It's yeah, it's, it's quite a dangerous track, this one. At the front, and it was a similar, <laughs> a similar battle to the first race between the Testarossa and the Celica. There was the purple BMW uh, behind that was incredibly fast down the start finish straight, but then would lose a bit of time through the sort of more, more technical sections. These two cars were actually very evenly matched in a straight line. The Celica though was just a little bit better through the corners. The BMW absolutely threw, flew sorry, through turn one, well turn one and two, and <laughs> caught up right to the back of uh, these two cars. Yeah, they absolutely nailed it through that corner to make up a lot of the gap. And as we come through the next corner, the Sleeker is getting ever closer. Uh, one of your best overtaking spots is this next corner, if you can get it up the inside. Fortunately for the two cars behind, the Testarossa just had a wheel on the kerb. One of the, one of the dangers of this track, all it took was a wheel on the kerb, uh, ended up out a little bit wide, and uh, yeah, the two cars uh, could go through. Further back, there was a very brave Fiat trying to go <laughs> around the outside. I don't think I've ever seen a, an overtake done around the outside of that corner. Well done for the Fiat for giving it a go, but uh, yeah, that, that, that's a scary manoeuvre to, uh, to, <laughs> to try and get past. It's a very, very fast corner. Uh, through here. The, the Datsun at the front of this train had a big sideways moment and again another car that was having a little bit, I think it may be a little bit bumpy perhaps on the outside of that corner. Uh, cars running a little bit wide can get caught up and get a big slide on as they round the final corner. Now we have the drag race down towards the turn one. You would expect the muscle car perhaps to be the fastest of this sort of train of four vehicles and you would be very much wrong. It is the Fiat that is the quickest car <laughs> in a straight line, probably to do with its, its lightness. It looks so diddy compared to the, uh, I think it's a Buick. Yeah, as they come through turn one though, the Fiat uh, has uh, a little bumping battle with a big muscle car and doesn't come out of the, come out of it quite so well. BMW is then trying to get to the inside of the Fiat around the next corner. The muscle car's now got a little bit of a breather. The Nats and scampered off uh, into the distance and the Fiat yet again tries to go around the outside of somebody through this very fast corner and gets a big slide on and can't quite make that maneuver work. At the front, it was to be the Toyota Celica again. That would take victory. 
uh, second place the uh, the purple BMW was you can see him in the background when the camera pans around he was he was there uh, not hugely close there we go uh, yeah was was kind of close-ish keeping the uh, Toyota a little bit honest uh, and the the fry tester also was just about uh, in at the back of shot as well uh, in this one our third and final race would go to the Silverstone International Circuit and off the start line a, a beetle would absolutely fly. I'm assuming that might be four-wheel drive or have a stupendously powerful engine because it absolutely shot off the start line. The, the group of cars behind were all jostling for position through the first quarter. A few cars uh, ended up out a little bit wide, a little bit of lag going on with the Shelby there, uh, but everybody mo mostly made it through the first couple of corners. I think there are a couple of spinners, but uh, on the whole it was a relatively clean first couple of corners, which it isn't always at Silverstone. It's uh, it's a pretty quick opening opening few corners, and this is a layout that people might not have driven quite uh, quite so much of. Then we have a very long back straight, testing the straight line speeds of the cars. The Lamborghini Countach goes to the inside uh, around the around around the corner, but the CRX can do uh, a fairly simple cutback. The Lamborghinis ended up out a, a little bit wide. Yeah, you you do want a certain amount of straight line speed for for this particular track. There are a couple of pretty sizable uh, long straights. The Honda is now trying to get to the inside of a Nissan on the final turn uh, and manages to get the, get the maneuver done. The final corner is not an easy one to overtake around here. It's a very fast corner. But quite a lot of this track is, uh, is pretty fast up towards turn one and the Nissan is having none of it and <laughs> gets himself to the inside. I think it surprises the Honda that he's even there. And again, round the next corner, it's side by side. The Honda though is on the inside. The Beetle managed to outbreak himself and is playing off in the uh, off in, in the grass, dirt, wherever where, wherever that p particular uh, piece of track goes. Yeah, the Beetle would uh, <laughs> would be incredibly fast and then fall back uh, to have to sort of battle with this group of cars. It was <laughs> trying to go three wide up towards the final corner is never a particularly good <laughs> good idea. The BMW M1 just ends up out of grip. You can't <laughs> Can't quite fit that many cars through that particular corner, runs a little bit wide. Uh, my Corvette is catching up to this group as they battle. The Beatles trying to find his way past a uh, Lamborghini Countach, and now the M1 is uh, trying to go around the outside of the next corner. My Corvette had broken suspension and broken brakes after a bit of a shunt, and I got ludicrously brave going around the outside of two cars with no brakes and dodgy steering. And somehow, and I'm still not sure how, I managed to get past the Countach and then go again around the outside of the M1 at the next corner and just managed to hold it all together. Yeah, my car was pulling horribly to the right under braking. I had no, no front left brake or front left suspension, uh, which made my Corvette incredibly scary to drive. Of course, damaged air, I meant I wasn't particularly quick in a straight line. We almost made it three wide into the top corner. I just managed to keep ahead of these guys and a little bump from the Countach would end badly for the M1 as he uh, ended up spinning off into the uh, gravel trap. And this midfield group would, would just remain battling for, for a large portion uh, of the middle of uh, the race. The Countach getting to the inside of the uh, the Nissan and getting that particular position. I think it's a Ford Falcon that's at the back of the group as well. Just making their <laughs> All sorts of, all sorts of uh, close action uh, going on at the front. It was two Hondas that led the way. The uh, the CRX had got to the lead and was ahead of a Civic. Gets an awful long way on two wheels through that particular corner as so they come up towards this this next one. The Civic goes to the inside. Unfortunately, Lag decided that these two shouldn't be leading the race and promptly took the pair of them out. They then caused uh, some chaos behind them, the Beetle getting caught up in it, uh, a, a Cyclone that had been doing very well in second had to dodge to avoid them, and it allowed me to catch up to the two leaders. Yeah, a little bit of a little bit of a shame with the uh, with the lag collision going on there. It did make for an interesting last couple of laps though, as the Beetle was now as heavily damaged as I was. The Cyclone, I don't know if it had any damage or not, but the Cyclone was <laughs> Cyclone was leading the race. The Beetle still had phenomenal straight line speed, of course, being 
being a rear engine car, when it took a hit on the front, it would have just broken perhaps brakes and suspension and aero and so on. The engine in the Beetle would be okay, so it's still faster than everything else uh, in a straight line, but was now not particularly nice through the corners. Uh, so yeah, yeah, the Cyclone uh, led led the race, which was I wasn't expecting to see a, a Cyclone particularly leading. I don't know if the Cyclone was damaged at all. I mean, you'll see, especially with my car and the Beetle, when they're under braking, they're moving around. The suspension is just not particularly happy. You might. Although, of all the tracks to have broken suspension on, this is probably one of the better ones. You won't see the cars bobbing around quite as much as they do normally. The Cyclone's out wide, my, my Corvette's out wide around the final corner, and the Beetle suddenly finds himself uh, back into, uh, into the lead. And, yeah, could just get away from the uh, Cyclone through the closing laps. And it would be the Beetle that would go on to, uh, to be victorious. Yeah, it was a bit of a shame that the, the, cars, the two cars that were leading, just an unfortunate moment of lag, would, uh, would put them out. Uh, but it does mean that the Beetle takes victory with a GMC Cyclone, amazingly, coming home in second place. And I would have a real fight on my hands on the closing lap the third between me and the Lamborghini Countach. I was really struggling with the Corvette trying to get it stopped with <laughs> these completely useless brakes. I was having to be uh, incredibly defensive uh, in trying to fend off this uh, Lamborghini. But again, coming into this next corner, I just couldn't quite get it stopped in time. The Lamborghini's trying to do the cutback. But this is a bit of a, a fiddly section, quite hard to overtake through here. And if you're in front, uh, with your nose in front through that final corner. There's not much that the Lamborghini could do. He tried his very best to go around the outside, but uh, couldn't quite. It was, I think it was a tidy, tidy margin between the pair of us. But I did manage to hold on to third place, amazingly, with a uh, somewhat poorly Corvette. Well, that is it for this week's Fire Race versus Community. Uh, there was some, there was some interesting racing. I had a broken Corvette for quite a lot of it, but it was a, uh, <laughs> it was quite good fun, uh, nonetheless. The next verse of the community shall be held on Thursday the 11th of December. We'll be on Forza Horizon 2 racing some C-Class cars. We'll be doing a mixture of some circuit races, some point-to-point -point stuff. It'll be mostly tarmac stuff uh, on, on Horizon 2 this time around. If you want to sign up to take part in that, then you can go to our forums. There will be a link in the description, and you find the Ferris vs. the Community section in there, and uh, that is where you sign up. The races will be starting at 7pm GMT time. However, that is it for today, so thank you very much for watching, and until next time, a goodbye.